A Cessna Caravan aircraft went missing on Tuesday evening. The light aircraft with a maximum of eight passengers and two crew members was en route to the Jomoknyat International Airport from Kitale. We understand that the aircraft's last contact was at 5 p.m. when it allegedly crashed 25 miles north of the Abadair. Uh, Flight 14 Fly Success issued a joint statement yesterday evening asking families of the next of, and the next of kin um, to convene at the Western Hotel Nairobi for more information. There are reports that mobile phone signals from the missing plane have been located in the Kinangop area of the Abadares, but the search has been hampered by bad weather. Authorities launched a search and rescue mission that is expected to continue as we speak. All right, welcome back to News Centre. Thank you for staying with us and joining us. If you are, we're still keeping a close eye on the developments to do with that missing aircraft. Um, but as we do so, let's also take a look at other top stories um, here in the country. And over 1,000 procurement and finance heads in public service have until Friday to submit all their personal data, including financial records, in line with President Uhuru Kenyatta's fresh integrity test. That, as Muridi Mimwangi now reports, experts have warned of a light likely legal storm over the president's directive for use of lie detecting machines during the vetting. Only a day after President Uhuru Kenyatta ordered all heads of finance and procurement units in public service to step aside for a mandatory fresh integrity test. I'm sharing with you. This directive has continued to elicit mixed reactions with the Institute of Supplies Management demanding inclusion of more officers to the vetting list. To widen the scope of accountability, a mechanism should ensure that other individuals and organizations in the procurement value chain undergo a similar vetting exercise. These corruption cases, it is no longer corruption. To me, it does not qualify to be called corruption. This is robbery without violence to the country. We would like the president to take this exercise further by also looking at all the officers within his government, e.g. the CS, PS, finance directors, and chief financial officers. D, the presidential action on corruption must be within the law. In his directive, Kenyatta, through Office of Government spokesman, had asked procurement and finance heads to hand over to their deputies and to present all their personal information, including financial records, to head of public service Joseph Kinyua's Harambe House office by Friday 5 p.m., with a warning that non-compliance would lead to disciplinary action. The procurement officers work in two ways. You have a deputy, and then you have a tender committee. So you have a multi-layer system, which is in the act. So there are people who issue the tenders and open the tenders. They also are as guilty as the procurement officers. All of us together, let us look for those individuals, whether they, they come from the opposition area or from government area or from whichever community, let us fight them and make sure that it becomes all of us a responsibility to protect public resources. But likely to ignite a storm is Kenyatta's directive for use of lie detectors, popularly known as polygraph measures, during the exercise, a move which former ombudsman and current Radiada legislator Otiende Amolo argues could open a floodgate to likely labor disputes. Polygraph tests are not admissible in court. So to what end would you be putting these results unless there's a legal framework that would enable you to produce them in court so that even if you are to terminate somebody or to prosecute somebody, you are able to produce those results. Those who shall fail the vetting will stand suspended. About a thousand public officers from ministries, government agencies and corporations are expected to face the exercise, which insiders say could be a launchpad to a wide-reaching purge in government before the coming financial year. Murami Mwangikichia News, Nairobi. Kisumu City has lived with the infamous Kechok dump site located a few meters away from the busy Kisumu Busia Highway for years. After several attempts to relocate it or hitting a deadlock, the county government of Kisumu has at last had the headway and it is in the process of converting the dump site to a pack. Our reporter Kevin Agutunal joins us for an update on the progress. Kevin, talk to us about this. 
Well, a very good morning. The preparations to convert this particular dam site into a park is clearly in high gear. I remember this is one park, the Kachok dam site, that has been an ISO in this part of Kisumu city for quite some time now. Uh, actually, it's over 35 years. Uh, and therefore, this uh, process of actually converting into a park is quite welcome, uh, given that this particular dam site sits very near a number of major resources in this particular city, one of them uh, being uh, the uh, moist Stadium here, uh, which is supposed to be hosting quite a number of matches, both the regional and uh, local matches here. We have a number of big hotels around here, together with the special schools, and uh, even the mega plaza, which uh, has uh, the, one of its kind a cinema uh, in within. So. Uh, this particular exercise of converting a chalk dump site uh, into a park is ongoing uh, despite of course resistance from some of people who have been the beneficiaries, uh, particularly those who have been benefiting from uh, the usage of the, uh, the usage of the waste so collected. Uh, so this is one thing that uh, the residents of Kisumu are actually uh, waiting for uh, to see how, how it gets to the end of it so that the entire place can be a beautiful park and not a dump site. All right, thank you very much, uh, Kevin Oguti, for that uh, update. Let's see how that goes. Now, Kenyans could soon pay lower electricity bills as the government announced plans to have uh, power project costs be denominated in local currency to insulate consumers against forex adjustment. Here is more. To look at our bills now, I think the last month's bill, the, the, what we call the foreign exchange late fluctuation, which looks at all loans which have been off-taken from the time we started this development. And it's not just that. There are also some other projects funded by both Kenya Power, KenGen, which used foreign currency. For example, at the moment, the loans which they do uh, in Ketrako to put up the transmission lines, or even Kenya Power to put some of the distribution lines. Because some of those materials, most of them, are actually foreign. They are also denominated in foreign currency. So looking in totality, all those uh, loans that have been off-taken by KenGen, by Kenya Power, the, the last bills, foreign exchange, lead for acquisition, should have been one shilling and ten cents, if, if I'm not wrong. It should be in that region. So that is uh, really the impact, because that is now going to balance the difference between the change of the exchange rate today and those other previous times. Now, as mentioned, Cuban doctors are in the country and opinion is divided over their presence. Let's listen to what Kisumu Governor Anyang Nyonga had to say as he welcomed the doctors into the country last evening. So that's going to be coming in in a few seconds. But of course, remember the 50 Cuban doctors and it's 50 out of 100 who jetted into the country yesterday evening. And of course, they're coming in amid controversy over a number of things, including the pay. Now, the doctors landed yesterday at the JKIA and they were received by the Kisumu governor, Anyang Nyongo. Now, we understand that uh, they will be um, having and going through a two-week induction process and exercise um, starting this Friday at the Kenya School of Government. Now, one of the other things that had a lot of uh, people talking, really, especially doctors here in Kenya, was uh, to do with some of the perks, including furnished apartments, security, transport, and a monthly uh, salary with some, a lot, actually a lot of privileges. All right, so we will take a short commercial break. We'll take a short commercial break. Coming back in a few moments, don't go away.